I thought we would hang out this morning because there are some planty things that I would like to get done. One of them being addressing my propagations because they have been quite neglected. So we're gonna check in on those. And then I'd like to get done just a couple, a couple more plant chores. I'm feeling like I'm falling a little bit behind um, just with the end of the growing season approaching and everything. So the next couple weeks, I'm really gonna be focusing my energy on just trying to catch up on plant chores that aren't watering because currently a lot of my plant care time is solely dedicated to watering because it's been so hot out. Anyways, I thought I would just take you along with me through my morning. It is currently 8 30 a.m and i've been up for a few hours actually i got up and made breakfast did some chores tidied up that type of thing had a shower my hair is currently air drying and now i think i'm gonna make myself a cup of tea and a little snack to have while i get ready um, my hair is just air drying and i haven't done my makeup or anything so i think i'm gonna do that now and then kind of plan out what plant chores i want to do so Oh, first I need to turn on my plant lights because I haven't done that yet. Only some of them are on automatic timers and the others I have to go around and turn on, which I don't really mind, honestly. I mean, it's nice to have the automatic timers, but it's kind of nice to just like be able to walk around and briefly check on them in the morning while I turn, the, turn on the lights. This is one of my favorite little planty areas, this cute shelf with a lot of my moss pool plants and some other ones. Um, they just look so beautiful displayed here. So I always get really happy whenever I look at this little area. And I just have a lamp in front of here that I turn on every day so that they get some extra light. phone in the morning so it's usually on do not disturb but i do like to listen to my audiobooks when i get ready currently listening to attached on the libby app i think i'm gonna put my lashes on this morning i've been using the false scare lashes for the past couple of months now and i really like them and i've really improved on my like speed of applying them so it's usually pretty quick Okay, my hair has basically dried now, so I'm just gonna go in with my serum that I use pretty much after every time I wash it. Okay, I'm just gonna sit down and take a minute to think about what plant things I want to prioritize for this morning. Okay, so on my list for plant things to do this morning, I want to first check on my moss poles. I do this every couple of days, just walking around and topping up any that are starting to dry out. And then I would like to water my begonias outside. I have two begonias that, well, I have a bunch of begonias that live in the back on my deck. And then I have just a couple of like outdoor begonias that live in the front area of my house. So I know that those need water today. So I need to remember to do that. And then next we're gonna be checking on my propagations. I, I don't even know what I'm gonna be doing with them today. I know a lot of them either need water topped up or need to be maybe potted up. I don't know, we'll see what's gonna happen, but those need to be looked into for sure. And then the last thing I would like to do, I wanted to choose something else that would be a little bit fun. So I picked out to repot my variegated alocasia dragon scale and also my alocasia olani. Both of those plants I got from WePot Plants 
in June, I think. So it's almost been a couple of months that I've had them, which is so crazy, but they need to be potted. So I'm really excited to do those. Looking forward to tackling those plant tasks together today. But first I would like to thank today's sponsor, Helix. Okay, we're moving over here because the lighting is better and also you can see the queen right there. So if you haven't heard of Helix before, they offer premium mattresses that are customized to you and shipped right to your door. So most mattresses are just one size fits all, which obviously isn't gonna work for a lot of people. So with Helix, they actually have you take a sleep quiz where they assess things like your sleeping preferences, your body type, how many people are in the bed, and then they match you to your perfect mattress. Personally, I prefer a medium firm mattress, but I'm also a side sleeper, so it needs to have enough support and pressure relief so that I don't wake up with like a sore shoulder, which yes, the old sore shoulder is something that I have definitely struggled with <laughs> in the past. I was matched to the Midnight mattress and I ended up getting the Midnight Luxe, which I've been so happy with so far. It's medium firmness, but it has a really plush pillow top. So it still gives you that really just like comfortable, cozy feeling when you're laying in it. If you know me, you know that I'm a comfort queen. I love my sleep. I love being cozy. So I was really excited to see what mattress I was gonna be matched up to and then try out that one that was like specifically tailored to my needs. This is my first Helix mattress and I haven't had it for very long yet. So I will update y'all as more time passes. But so far, I've been very impressed just from everything like the, the, the ease of it coming right to my door, the setup being so simple and straightforward. It comes just rolled up in a box. You just have to unpackage it basically. I've noticed I'm falling asleep more quickly. I'm not tossing and turning as much in the night and I haven't had any pain or anything. So, so far so good. I should have filmed my first reaction getting onto this mattress because I was like, wow, this feels so luxurious. Helix mattresses are fiberglass free, which I really appreciate. And they also offer a 100 night trial. So you can try on it, sleep on it for a hundred nights and see if it's gonna work for you. They also offer a 10 year warranty and flexible payment plans. So if you are in the market for a new mattress, I highly recommend checking out Helix. You can go to helixsleep.com slash wildfern for 20% off of your mattress and two free pillows. Thank you so much to Helix for sponsoring this video. Now let's hop into our plenty tasks. Okay, I feel like my energy levels are slowly increasing as the morning goes on, so that's great. We are going to start with watering the moss poles. I just have plain water here and I'm just gonna make my way around and top up anybody that feels dry. It's really hot lately, so I'm probably gonna top up most of them, honestly, just so that they stay moist. The key to moss poles is just making sure that they stay within the range of being any any level of moist honestly like as long as they don't dry out completely you're fine but once they dry out completely they become a big pain in the butt to rehydrate and that's when water runs down and you risk overwatering the plant so for me i just try to catch them before they completely dry out as long as they're not crunchy you're fine that's kind of the goal for me of course mine do dry out like it's it's hard to be a hundred percent perfect at keeping them moist but that's the goal, is to just prevent them from going crunchy. I only have a couple of them in my Millsbow Wide right now. So we have one of my Epipremnum No IDs here, and this one is actually quite dry, so I'm gonna make sure I give it a good spray. And my Epipremnum marble down here is actually quite moist still. So I'm just gonna top that one up like a little bit. Boop, boop, boop. That's good. And then I like to top up any other moss propagations or anything that I find dries out really quickly while I'm going around doing this. So my Anthurium minahasa here is currently working on a new leaf. First of all, how cute but I can tell that the moss is getting a little bit dry on the top there. So I'm just gonna water this one a little bit, just like a little touch up water. And this prevents, you know, the plant from completely drying out before I water this cabinet again, because if that happens, especially while it's putting out a new leaf, then I'm gonna see the effects of that. The new leaf will come out wonky or something. So just something that I like to stay on top of. And that's the benefit of having the moss uh, like top dressing on anthuriums because it kind of gives you a cue as to when um, you need to water. 
And then I'm just gonna check my little Nepenthes. This one has not been doing great. It is putting out this nice pitcher though, so that's good, but I'm gonna give that one a little drink. This one dries out more quickly than my other one over here because this one is closer to the fan on this side. So I have to be on top of that guy. While we're here, I just have to show you this Anthurium Forgetti eye leaf because I'm in love with it. I struggle with Anthurium Forgetti eye so much. So the fact that I actually got this like perfect cute little leaf, look at him. Oh my goodness, it's single-handedly making me fall in love with this Anthurium again. So I'm just, I'm so impressed with this one. It's so cute. Need to pot that up soon too. Okay, so we're good in here. I have a couple of moss poles outside the cabinet. So this is my Monstera Escaletto, which is currently working on a new leaf. So I'm excited to watch that unfurl. But um, the moss needs a little bit of a touch up. So I'm going to do that. Sometimes for my bigger ones, I just take off the lid and kind of pour it through. It saves time. So that's good for that one. And then down here, we have my Philodendron Narrow, which is looking so good lately. Like, oh my goodness, I'm obsessed with this new leaf. It's growing so well, such an amazing plant. I'm just gonna top him up a little bit carefully. That one dries out really fast. And the plant too, honestly, I think that he needs to be repotted. I won't talk you through all of them, but this is just the gist of what I do every couple of days to maintain these poles. And sometimes I use fertilizer water, sometimes I use Super Thrive water, sometimes I just use water water, so it just depends. These ones are so hard to keep up with, and I think it's because they get this sun on them. I actually have the curtains closed in like the lower window, if you can see, because it's very hot. We're going through a heat wave um, this upcoming week, so I'm just keeping everything closed. Um, but the top window, can you see it up there? It doesn't have curtains and that's south facing and you can still see how much sun hits these poles just from that portion of the window. Um, so I think that that's why they dry out so much. So I just have to honestly, yeah, two days is the longest these can go before they start getting too dry. They're high maintenance queens over here. But they're some of my favorite plants, so I'm willing to, willing to deal with their high maintenance-ness. I recently posted a whole video where I extended 10 of my moss poles and we did three of these ones I think. We did the Gigas, the Brandy, and the Glorious, and then seven more. So if you haven't checked that one out, I'll link it down below so that you can. It was a fun time. staying pretty moist in the cabinet because it's at like 92% humidity in here lately in the cabinet not in my house um so I don't really think like I might give them a little bit of a touch up but they're staying pretty good which is great
Okay, so we have done the moss poles. I just watered the begonias outside. Next, we are going to check on propagation. So I'm gonna go gather those up and get all set up and then I'll see you there. Okay, so I've grabbed my propagations and let's just go through these one by one because <laughs> we have a lot going on here. So first of all, I have these two. I haven't actually shown these on here yet, but I ended up cutting up my philodendron serpents and propagating it because it was just looking so bad. So I have two plants already, two little plantlets from it, and they are just the cutest thing. I'm kind of obsessed with these, honestly. I think that they just look so good. I'm so happy that I chopped the plant. I get to start over fresh. Um, whenever I'm not loving a plant, I don't hesitate to chop because it's always worth it in the end. So I have one cutting in here and I have two. I think it's two separate. Is it two separate cuttings? I think it is two separate cuttings in here. So there's one leaf and another one is going to be coming out from there. Um, so these are planted in my tree fern fiber mix, which I've been loving. Every plant that I've potted into my mixture of tree fern fiber, orchid bark, and perlite with some Osmocote slow release fertilizer have been doing so well. It's really making me want to try that mix with more plants. Like I think I need to order another bag of tree fern fiber because I'm loving it that much. Honestly, immediately, like so quickly, I could see roots um, growing after I potted these little babies up. So, so I've really, really been impressed with that. Um, the only thing I need to do with these right now is just water them. They do live on my little propagation shelf. So that's why we are, I've taken them out to um, care for. So those just need a water, easy peasy. And this is another little baby plant that lives on my propagation shelf. Why is my focus so poor right now? There we go. Um, this is a little baby philodendron majestic and it's just putting out its very first leaf there as you can see. So I'm really excited to see that and just to have a little baby because I love philodendron majestic. Not sure what I'm gonna do with it once it grows, we'll see, but yeah, just a cute little propagation. That one just needs a water too. And then we have my Syngonium erythrophyllum or Syngonium black. Um, these are the only cuttings that survived from when my plant rotted and I tried to save some. So uh, they're looking really gnar. We need to pot these up. I think I'm gonna do it today finally because I keep just putting it off, but it needs to be done. So we're gonna do that. And then in this jar, we have some, it looks like just regular green Hartley philodendron, some philodendron Brazil, and then also some Hoya sigillatus cuttings, which are these even rooting? Oh, there actually is like little roots on this. I'm kind of surprised by that. I did chop up my Hoya sigillatus. So there's kind of random sigillatus cuttings all throughout. Some of them didn't make it. So I'm gonna take the gross ones out. Like, yeah, there's definitely some gross ones in here. Look at that one. Um, here's another one. This one is just starting to root actually, and it's still firm, so that is good. And then all my little heart leaf guys, which are rooted. So I think I'm gonna pot these up because it it is time. So I'm just gonna set this aside. I'll clean this glass out and then put the sigillatus cuttings back in probably, but I'm just gonna kind of set everything to the side until we start doing everything. I'm just doing a little show and tell right now. So next we have a cup of my Manjula Pothos and um, Philodendron, uh, I was gonna say Brazil, Brantiana, which I, I took this cutting, I don't know. I'm always taking cuttings of that plant because it grows janky leaves sometimes and then I just like to cut them off. So which ones are rooted here? We have roots on this little brandy cutting. We have roots, ooh, this is a really nice one. What the heck? Okay, so we have roots on, I think all of these are rooted actually. We have little roots on this brandy cutting. Not very many, but they're coming in. And then my manjula pothos. And it's put out this new leaf since it's been propagating and it's so pretty, it's got so much white on it. 
Now we're moving on to my little propagation boxes. So this is a little moss propagation box that I did. And it has some Syngonium Albo. Oh, it's pretty dry too. It has some Syngonium Albo and an Amedrium Medium Silver. So I guess I'll be pulling the ones that are I guess I'll be pulling the ones that are ready out of here and um, potting them up. I'll probably just put them with the mother plants. Like I already have an Amedrium medium and I already have Syngonium albo. So I'll just pop them into whatever pots. I'm gonna run this under some water to loosen up the moss. Oh, look at the roots on the bottom. What's fallen out? Oh, a dead, a dead stick. And then these ones, I mostly just wanna check on and see what progress is being made because I'm curious. So this one is Begonia amphioxus leaf uh, propagations that I took on July 14th. I'm trying to get into the habit of labeling my propagations now so that I, just, just for my own sake, just so that I can see how long they've been propagating. So um, let's check on these. I did these in a Patreon video and I was saying that I never have luck propagating begonia by leaf or I guess begonia amphioxus. I've tried a couple times and they've just rotted on me both times, but I think that I might actually be in luck this time. <gasps> oh my goodness. Can you see all, oh my gosh, they're gonna fall out, but. There's a bit of a glare, but hopefully you can see all of the roots <gasps> along the bottom. Oh my goodness. I don't know why I haven't thought before to just check the bottom to see if I could see roots. That's crazy. <gasps> I think that most of these are rooted in here. That is just the coolest thing ever. This is my first successful begonia leaf propagation and it looks like they literally all made it. Oh my goodness. I'm so thrilled about this. So it's been about a month or coming up to a month now, but what the heck? <gasps> I honestly can't believe that. I don't even know what I want to do with them. I think I'm going to leave them a little bit longer. I think that if you leave them, they'll eventually push out little leaves, like little new growth. So I'm going to leave them for now. And then um, they're still nice and moist. And then I can kind of figure out what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to Put these back into the mother plant. I mean, probably not all of them because there's a lot. And my begonia amphioxus is just growing out of control. I have my big mother plant. I have a smaller one now. I have water propagations, a whole bunch of these rooted in my cabinet. And now I have these. So I'm just like, I've got so much of this plant. It's crazy. I kind of just want to do a really big one, but I just repotted the mother plant and it would need to be sized up again. So I don't know. Or maybe I'll just grow out, maybe I'll just pot another one. I love this plant, so I'll just find a spot for another one, maybe. Anyways, that's very cool to see. And then this one is my Amedrium Medium Silver Runner cutting. So I took these on July 6th, and I can see that they they're maybe starting to put out some new growth, but I don't know how rooted they are, so let's check. I was guessing it would take about six weeks for them to root, but it doesn't really look like we have much for roots. Oh, maybe one. One is starting to root. We just have the very, very beginnings of roots. So I'm not gonna bother them too much. I'm just kind of, is that a root or a growth? I think it's a growth. It's funny how wet sticks put out leaves before roots sometimes. Oh, this one part of it rotted, so I'm just going to take that one out. Anyways, it's looking good for the most part. Oh, I'm going to remove this. Sometimes just like part of the stick will rot, and I like to just remove it. Okay, so those definitely need to cook for a little bit longer. Again, don't know what I'll even do with them when they are rooted, but we're growing them. And then most recently, I took my... There's more philodendron serpents in here, which is from... July 18th and then there's also Hoya sigillatus from July 20th so I don't know if there's going to be roots on any of these but let's check oh looks like we have some that need, need to be removed this guy's not making it sadly there's more dead leaves I wasn't expecting 
this whole Hoya Sigillatus to take to make it because it was it was going downhill and that's the reason that I chopped it up. So I was just hoping that a couple of cuttings would survive, which don't know if any of these are rude. Oh yes, they are. Oh, we have one that's rooted. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there's a bunch of fuzzy roots in there. So that one's for sure rooted. So that's great. At least one of them. Oh, it looks like another one is rooted. Okay, so we're making some progress. Oh, another, this one's really rooted too. <gasps> okay, perfect. I'm glad some of them are making it. And then over here we have my philodendron serpents wet sticks. And it looks like I'm just starting to get a little baby root on there. This is like kind of weird looking. Nothing too crazy. So those guys need to stay in for longer, definitely. Um, but I'm really happy to see that progress with the Hoya Sigillatus. So I'm just going to close this back up. And these are all living under my uh, grow lights on my little, I made a propagation shelf in my office makeover video. Um, just using these like Amazon grow lights that I put on the shelf So that's what all these plants have been living under and they've been doing really well So I'm gonna start off by just watering the ones that need to be watered Okay, I'm gonna do the ones where they just need to be added back into the mother plant. So I have my philodendron brandy here and we have these two cuttings that need to go in. So I'm just gonna try to make a little hole for them and then pop them in. I don't know if these will make it. I mean, they probably will, but there's not a ton of roots, especially on this one. There's just that root there, so we'll see. Gonna cover them up a little bit. Then we'll see how those do. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water into the pot. This plant doesn't really need to be watered, but just to where the dry soil is that I put in. Okay, and then next we have my Syngonium Albo, which is one of my favorite plants right now. Since I chopped it, it's just been looking so good. Like she's so full and lush and the variegation is looking just so, so beautiful. So yeah, I'm really, really, really loving this one lately. I'm gonna add in, I think there's two cuttings here. This one I'm gonna do. I don't know if it's gonna make it because we're getting a lot of white and it's also like half rotted or was trying to rot. Um, but this one looks pretty good variegation wise. So, although look, the sides are like rotted on this one too. But sometimes that happens with wet stick plants and then they're still fine. We'll give it a go. Oh my gosh, the roots on these. Okay, let me get off this weird part. But the roots on these are so long, it's crazy. This is this one. Like what the heck, I was pulling and it just like kept coming from the container. And this one is even bigger. It's like massive, I can hardly even show it all. This little tiny thing and this big long root so i'm gonna have to try to bury the whole root in here this looks like a good open spot right here kind of near the back but that's okay okay i've made that hole i'm gonna try to pop them in and just kind of like curl the roots up they'll eventually make their way down Okay, they're in there. 
we'll see what happens. I'm <clears throat> not super confident in them surviving, but you know, we'll see how it goes. Okay, there's quite a bit of roots. Wait, where are you? There we go. There's quite a bit of roots on the a medium, medium silver too. I've dug a little hole, but I feel like it's gonna be difficult to, well, it might be fine actually. There we go. I have quite a few vines in here now, so I think this one is good. <laughs> Don't think I need any more vines in this pot. And just cover it up with a little more potting mix. There, that's pretty good actually. Okay, so there's the little baby cutting we just put in and this is what the full plant looks like. Some of these original like propagation leaves don't look great, but it's starting to grow. And I have this leaf, which is looking beautiful. And then a lot of the vines are rooting in and starting to grow, which is nice. So I'm really excited to see this plant start to take off soon. Doesn't want to focus, but yeah, cute little leaf right there. Okay, so we're moving on to the Syngonium erythrophyllum and I'm gonna try it in my tree fern mix. I haven't potted a syngonium in, I don't have that many syngonium, so I haven't tried a uh, tree fern with that type of plant yet, but we're gonna try it and see how it goes. I'm very curious. It's very like fibrous and crunchy feeling. Um, okay, so let's pop these in. The roots look pretty good, so happy about that. Okay, so that's what it looks like. I'm gonna give it a water and then I'm probably gonna pop it under some grow lights and hope for the best. I would really love to see this plant make a comeback. I was so sad when it all just croaked on me. Okay, as for the Manjula pothos, I'm gonna leave it in water for just a little bit longer. Um, I really wanna get this onto a pole and I just don't have the time right now to make a pole and get it situated the, the way I want it to be. You know, I want to um, be able to take my time with this one a little bit more. And unfortunately I have other work to do this afternoon. So I need to wrap up my little planty morning, but um, I did change the water and it's gonna be fine in water for just a little bit longer. Hopefully I'll get to it later this week, but yeah. We're putting that one on hold. And then same with this. I think I'm gonna end up potting all of these cuttings into a pot together and, um, and just grow out a cute little mixed pot. That's gonna be my plan. But again, I'm just gonna leave them in water until uh, I'm able to do that. So I refilled the water and this can just go back to, where was this even living? Yeah, it was under the grow lights. It's on my propagation shelf. So it seems to really be happy there. So it can stay there for another week or so. Okay, now for the thing that I'm most excited for, and that is potting up my variegated alocasia dragon scale. Look at her. Like, are you kidding me? Oh, it looks so good. This is the newest leaf, which is unfortunately all white, which scares me. <laughs> it's probably gonna, say bye bye in a little while here but it's hanging on for now and it just looks incredible um so this plant has been in sphagnum moss for a while i've had it for a couple of months and it's been in sphagnum the, this is how it came in this sphagnum moss so it's definitely due to be potted 
I'm going to be putting it into this orchid pot. Hopefully I'll find a cute cover pot for this sometime soon, but I'll put it into this clear orchid pot with the Crystal Star Tropical Mix. I recently stocked up on this, grabbed myself a few more bags because I love it. My Alocasia Silver Dragon is currently in this mix and it's doing really well. It actually just put out a leaf that is like significantly bigger than the other leaves. So it's loving life. Um, so I think that that's gonna be a good choice for both of these plants actually. This is the other one, my Alocasia Olani, which is so stinking cute. Look at him. Oh my goodness, I love it. The backs are so cool too. Um, so I'm gonna be popping this into the Crystal Star Mix as well, just in this little pot. It's kind of like a small, tall orchid pot. So that's the plan. I don't know why I'm not using a potting mat. I'm making a big mess in my kitchen, but that's okay. At least I'm right beside the sink. Um, so I'm just gonna start removing the moss from this one. Maybe I'll put the moss back into here. I'm so excited to be getting this into potting mix. I've been meaning to for a while now. I think it's really gonna take off in this mix, so I can't wait. Okay, so the root system is looking amazing on this plant, which I'm so, so thankful for. So yeah, I think it's gonna do just fine, hopefully. I get nervous repotting alocasia because I've had them uh, pull fits before after repotting. So hopefully, hopefully she'll just be happy. Anyways, okay, let's get her situated in here. I was actually tempted to try a new mix. I have the Molly's. Um, aeroid mix that I'm really wanting to try out with some of my plants and I also was curious to try my tree fern because I haven't tried that on an alocasia yet but I just decided that this was not not the alocasia that I wanted to be running experiments with so that's why I'm using this one tried and true Okay, she is done and oh my goodness, she looks so good in here. Oh, I really need to find a cute cover pot for this plant because she obviously needs to be in something better than just this nursery pot. Oh my goodness, one last look. I cannot wait to see how she does. Wow, okay. Moving on to the next one, which is the Olani. Both of these live in my Mills Tall, by the way. And I'm just gonna be putting them back in there. And this one's already in potting mix, but you can see the root system is popping and it's just this little tiny pot. So I'm gonna upsize her a little bit, not a huge upsize, but an upsize nonetheless. Okay. 
Take her out. Wow. Yeah, the roots look so good. So healthy. So that's amazing. Pop her in. I'm also just gonna put some Osmico in these two. And in the Syngonium because I forgot to put some in. A little bit more in this one. Okay, perfect. So the fertilizer will be all ready for the next time I water these through. There they both are. Oh my goodness, I'm so in love with Alocasia. I think these are gonna do amazing. I hope so. I'm gonna go put them back in the cabinet now. Okay, I have to clean my big mess up. And then I have a busy afternoon today of catching up and doing a bunch of work on my laptop. Oh, sneak peek of my new plant shelves if you made it to the end. <laughs> Video will be coming soon on my new shelf setup. I'm waiting for one thing to arrive and then I can finish it all up, but I can't wait to share with you because I'm obsessed. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed spending the morning with me doing some planty things. Once again, a huge thank you to Helix for sponsoring today's video. You can get 20% off of a Helix mattress for yourself if you go to helixsleep.com slash wildfern. All right, I'm out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave me a comment down below. I would love to chat with you and I will see you in the next one. Bye.